All right, let's keep this shit moving. Your final performer of the evening. This guy puts his clean coal in your dirty stocking. Let's give it up for Andrew Coulson! I put the mic closer to my mouth and then I take it away, it sounds exactly the same. Is that what's happening right now? Can this make any difference at all how I talk if I have the microphone? If I do it like this, if I put it really intimately, that changes the way it sounds a little bit, doesn't it? How does that do for you guys? This is a very muffling way to do it. I always play with the mic a little bit. I want to see how it goes. I, it seems a bit unnecessary. It seems a bit harsh to have a mic so quiet with everybody so close. If it if I took it away, would that take away the illusion of me being a comedian? Would you be able <laughs> to respect me as a person if I wasn't using the microphone? If I got really close up to this light and blinded myself, would you be <laughs> Would you be able would you be able to watch this? <laughs> I have a banana split the other day. And it was so good, it was the best banana split that I ever had. What made it such a good banana split was the bananas. <laughs> Those bananas were so good that I started calling ice cream banana sauce. <laughs> I, me and that banana split, we were in love. We were like two peas in a pod and that name of the pod was a love bug. We were two peas in a love bug. <laughs> That's what it'll be like when I get married. <laughs> <laughs> My high school science lab got robbed the other day. They don't know who did it. It's a cum mystery. <laughs> <laughs> they have one leading suspect. His name is... Michael. <laughs> Can I get witness? <laughs> Can I get a witness? <laughs> Said the worst lawyer ever. <laughs> I want to be that lawyer someday who goes into a court and he just starts yelling that. That's my entire defense is yelling for a witness. Uh, it's a good way to do things. Um, I am a real person. I like to pretend that I'm not. It's a more comfortable state of being uh, to just be up here and yelling at everybody. Um, so, probably going to keep doing that, I guess. Um, I found out recently that uh, my ex-girlfriend is going to get married. Uh, we broke up two years ago. Uh, I'm 22, she's 21, and she's going to get married, which is just dumb. Which is just a dumb thing to do. I feel like being in a relationship should be like watching The X-Files on Netflix. You watch like one or two seasons, and then you get kind of bored with it, and then you stop watching it, and then you put it away, and then you think about it over the next couple of months, and then you get back to it, and you start watching it again, and then, and then you watch a few more seasons, and you're like, man, this is such bullshit, why do I keep watching X-Files on Netflix? And then you keep doing that, so you stop again, you go back, and you repeat until you watch the entire series, and then you're done with it, because watching the X-Files on Netflix for the rest of your life is insane. <laughs> I mean, especially X-Files, because the X-Files was like, it's not kind of a good show. Like, I mean, like, I know aliens aren't real, but they make a good case for it. Like, <laughs> like if you think about, like, I mean, like, what if there were aliens? What if they did communicate with our government? What if our government was that smart? And so, like, you know, there's kind of that illusion of the mystery that kind of keeps you going and watching X-Files for a long time. And then, like, they do reveal that there's actually actually aliens and they're like in a bunker that they use like an atomic bomb site to cover up. It's hard to watch. Basically what I mean is you should get married. Uh, just don't. <laughs> don't do that or watch the X-Files. I, I try to think because she was the love of my life and I think the reason why it ended is because whenever I start dating somebody, they start off as somebody who I find absolutely wonderful, who then just becomes like the big bad wolf where it's like one day I come home and I'm like, Oh, hey, girlfriend, why are your teeth so big? And she's like, oh, just so I can tell you about my day. Which is the fucking worst. <laughs> why? Why would I want to hear about your day? Just, oh, I was talking to this one guy while I was wolfing through the woods, and I got over to him, and then he said to me, like, 
oh, you look like such a good wolf. And I was like, you better not say that to me. I have a boyfriend. <laughs> and then, you know, you come home and you just, you just look at her and you say, oh my goodness, look at how big your stomach is. And then she says, yeah, better to bite your dick off and eat with. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> What it's like to date me. <laughs> also, I like to be friends with my ex-girlfriends, though. I mean, I'm a little bit harsh, I think. But, like, I like to be friends with them because, you know, like, this is a person who you give a portion of your life to. You should be able to talk to them more once you stop dating them. And so I try to do that, but, like, whenever things get kind of too real, whenever it's a little bit too much of, why did things end between us? Why aren't we seeing each other anymore? Like, I can definitely tell when I'm sitting across from you that we still have this sort of tension between us of love and of whatever. And so then I, to that, say, all the single ladies, sing a single lady. You're a single lady, sing a single lady. You're a single lady, sing a single lady. Sing a single lady, sing a single lady. You're a single lady, you're a single lady. Sing a single lady, sing a single lady. Sing a single lady, sing a single lady. You're a single lady, sing a single lady. Sing 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 a single lady, sing a single lady. I spent this last, this, uh, last like four months, I was in an apartment with six friends. So it was seven people in the entire house. And um, they were great to live with if they weren't communists. They seem to have this idealism about toilet paper where all of us buy toilet paper and then we'll have toilet paper. And what really happens is nobody buys toilet paper and none of us have toilet paper. <laughs> and I'm a capitalist, so I buy my own toilet paper and I keep it in my room. And then these communists keep up their own idealism and they come into my room and take my toilet paper and shit all over it. <laughs> They do with my ice cream sandwiches. I like ice cream sandwiches. There are few things in life that make me happy. Like, I would say I don't enjoy most people. I would say I don't enjoy most of what I do with my life. But I very much like ice cream sandwiches. I bought a 12-pack, and I came home one day, and seven were missing. <laughs> seven were missing when I got back. And so I said, I was like, hey, guys, did you eat my ice cream sandwiches? And, like... Everybody fessed up. They were like, I had like one. I was like, okay. And then you're know, like, somebody else is like, oh, I had one. So like three people said they had one. And then I get to the fourth person. So seven were missing. Three were accounted for. You get to the last person and he goes, well, I mean, yeah, I might have had two or three. I was like, did you have two or three or did you have three? And he was like, well, I guess I had three. And I was like, well, that's weird because there's four unaccounted for. And he was like, well, I guess maybe I had four. <laughs> Oh, you want to ask me about them? You want to buy me new ice cream sandwiches, you fucking you jerk? You big old jerk eating my food? That's mine? I had a landlord, the crazy, insane guy. Uh, like, he, um, he was the kind of guy who would, like, who would, like, you know, knock on the door at 2 a.m. and say, What's with all the stomping? And then I would be like, oh, you know, we're just living here. We just open the door and close it and, and walk around. Um, and he goes, well, that's bullshit. I'll have you evicted. And I was like, well, you know, the eviction process is a little long-winded, so I mean, you're probably not going to do that. And he's like, and then he goes, I'm going to punch your face in. And so then I was like, you have a good night. And then I the um, I have a lot of trouble sleeping at night because of that, because when I think about that, I start to imagine that my pillows have eyeballs and are staring at me while I sleep, because um, it's more comforting than imagining him taking a bucket of gasoline, pouring it on the stairs, and burning the house down with us in it. Um, he's a bit of a scary guy. I get songs stuck in my head sometimes. Like, you know, just like regular songs. But like, you know when you get songs stuck in your head? It's never actually the song. It's just you mumbling a version of the song. Just like, take it to the limit. Um, so that's what's going on in your head. And I imagine like with iTunes or whatever, they're going to blow it. They're going to put songs inside of your head that are the actual songs and you're not going to be able to mumble it anymore, but you will be able to like look at your music history and see that you listen to Safety Dance 40 or 50 times, just the, mute, the, the first minute and then the chorus of just S, S, A, 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 F, 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 T, 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 T,
That'd be really cool if it was the actual song. I'm not so against that. I could really get on board with that. There's another song I get stuck in my head a lot lately, and it goes, If you're not, she's saying you know it, you're pregnant. <laughs> That's a hard one to deal with. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm not the most sexually attractive guy ever. But I'm pretty close. I'm pretty high up there. <laughs> um, but no, I'm not the most attractive guy. But there have been occasions where two girls want to have sex with me at the same time. Like, I mean, not together, but individually. They're, like, it's not that attractive. Not both, but individually both of them do. So the way that I deal with this problem, so they can't have both, is I sit them both down and I say to them, Star Words! Pulsar! Red Dwarf! White Dwarf! Star Wars! Milky Way! Star of David! Beetlejuice! Which is a star. Do people know that Beetlejuice is a star? It's a star. <laughs> Beetlejuice! Star Wars! And so I go on like this until eventually one of them leaves and I'm left with this other girl and I look at her and she is not the girl for me. I, <laughs> I go after the girl who ran away because that's a girl with dignity. <laughs> that's the one who's gonna get my penis. Okay, thank everybody. <laughs> that's the one who's gonna get my penis. Have a good night. Give up for Andy Colson and his penis. Very nice. Wonderful. We want to thank all, all of our performers this evening. Andrew, David, Brian, Roland. And uh, it wouldn't be a holiday party if we didn't have a gift-giving part of the evening. So, uh, and not just because the cards expire in a week and a half, but we'd like to uh, give out, please pass them around. The Little Suggestion Fun Pack, which uh, includes uh, half-price drinks, and uh, what else does it include? Well, that's price drinks, so take full advantage of it this evening with the uh, delicious eggnog downstairs. You guys, you guys understand how to distribute these? Yeah. We used to get one. The moving? You got it? All right. All right, so that concludes... The Midnight Suggestion 2012 Escapades. I hope everybody had a great time this year. Woo! I think this might have been the only event. So uh, be, go forth and be merry. Peace to you and the world tonight.